Would you believe that Lexus has never offered a competitive mid-size premium three-row SUV ever? Okay, so there was maybe the GX and the LX, but let's understand that to compete with the likes of the Acura MDX and Infiniti QX60, they had nothing. Oh wait, you were, you were thinking RXL? No, I think even people who work for Lexus have forgotten about the RXL. That was kind of a half-assed attempt at filling in a gigantic lucrative void over at Lexus among its, well, let's admit it, pretty interesting and uh, highly efficient and good looking SUVs. But this is all going to change now for the 2024 model year with this TX. Now, um, I'm gonna be straight up honest with you. I've just come into contact with the TX. I only have a few minutes left, so this is gonna be a very, very brief video. But suffice it to say that Acura and Infiniti have been raking in the cash, thanks to the MDX and the QX60. Essentially, they're the two vehicles in that brand's, in those brands' lineups that are keeping the brands afloat, if you ask me. Uh, but Lexus is in a different position because they're doing extremely well with the RX and the NX and everything else they sell. So adding the TX, the all new TX to their lineup is going to be a phenomenal punch in the gut for the other automakers. And I, and I say this having only just now been in contact with this vehicle. And despite the fact that it is a prototype vehicle, I am convinced that it's going to do very, very well. So in the following first look, extremely brief video, I'm going to give you a quick tour of the new 2024 Lexus TX, which is based on the Toyota Lexus GAK platform. So essentially what you're looking at is a uh, Toyota Grand Highlander. I don't want to say it out loud, but I just did. That's been done up to the, you know, all the way up to the top. Uh, so let's not mistake the two, but then, you know, Oh, I don't want to say bad engineering, but it's going to work for this vehicle just based on the way it looks. So a uh, quick walk around. There will be a drive, obviously. That's going to happen in the future. So uh, hang in there, please. All right, let's just jump right into styling and a few comments based once more on these very, very brief first impressions. Um, I think Lexus has now done it. They figured out how to make the spindle grille, the once controversial, slightly oversized and, well, early on ungainly grille, they, they figured out how to make it work. And this is what uh, Lexus calls a unified spindle grille. Unified makes sense. Uh, right here you can see that it absolutely blends right into its surroundings. No longer is it, well, surrounded by some chrome or blacked out business or something like that. It absolutely, it makes sense now, I see it. Um, I mean, just the full front end design is, is very, very nice. It's distinct enough that it'll never be mistaken for its uh, body double, which isn't, well, as attractive, but not quite as attractive as this one. Uh, as far as trim is concerned, I'm not entirely sure what it is, but clearly it's an F-Sport and it's got the 22 inch wheels, which are, uh, well, I'll use the word dope. Um, so you see it's a TX500H Direct 4. So this is the 2.4 liter turbocharged version with hybrid power. Uh, it's, um, well, quite impressive, 366 horsepower. The other two versions um, are the uh, 350, which will use the 2.4 liter turbocharged engine already found in some Lexus and Toyota products, which is good for 275 HP. And briefly, my drive with the new Highlander with the 2.4 turbo, uh, it's amazing what a little turbocharger can do. It transforms the vehicle's behavior, absolutely. And then there's the 500H Plus, which is gonna be a plug-in hybrid version with the 3.5 liter, with the V6, in fact. That's going to be a smooth operating 406 horsepower luxury SUV. That one's gonna kill. Styling-wise, I mean, look, I love how it's beefy, how it's squared, yet elegant. Uh, it, it's really a beautiful SUV. Just to give you an idea, overall size, it's about 25 centimeters longer than the RX. Uh, so for our American friends, almost a foot longer. Uh, well, what else can we say about the exterior? I mean, I love the taillight treatment. It's, it's really, really an attractive SUV. I can't find a, a wrong angle on this vehicle. Again, I only have a few minutes left. Um, I don't have all the specs, but you can expect, actually, as we go inside, I'll show them to you, but a 12.3 inch digital IP, 14 inch touchscreen display, heads up display, 
uh, Lexus Safety System 3.0 are going to be available with this vehicle and a digital latch. I'll show that to you in a second. Um, power hatch, obviously. Trunk. Now this is what's going to make the difference between this. Well, it's, it's what's happening with the Grand Highlander and the Highlander. It's all about trunk space. So behind the third row, you're looking at 569 liters of trunk space. So it's actually quite usable. I haven't even checked under here yet. And well, there's no room, so it doesn't matter. Uh, nice touch. With the third row down, which is going to be a typical application, I'm guessing, you're looking at 1,625 liters of trunk space, which is within the norm for a mid-size premium SUV. Um, but what isn't is, is the beauty on the inside of this F-Sport 500H. Um, oh yeah, digital latch. There's no actual door handle. It's just a button now. I think you can maybe hear it. Yeah, there you go. Nice touch, I suppose. Uh, same thing for the inside. Actually, it's just a latch. Yeah, look at that. Well, that's kind of cool, very neat. So this is what I meant by the interior. The materials are gorgeous, fit, finish, the cross stitching. Uh, seven seater configuration is available, though this is the six seater with the captain seats in the second row. Um, I haven't sat in them, but I'm guessing that just based on what I've experienced in the Highlander, they're going to be fairly comfortable, supportive enough. I haven't moved the seats, so uh, just to say that I'm sure leg room is far more generous than this is actually. There we go. Oh, I'm gonna try this with the elbow. Okay, that's as far back as it goes, so it's probably a seat that's all the way back, just for ease of ingress and egress. Uh, the front, very premium. I, you know, I have my my thoughts about a lot of gloss black material, but it, it does add a very premium touch to it. The Mark Levinson audio. Uh, I've been told I can start it, but I can't move it. Oops. There's a start button. See, I'm very unfamiliar with this vehicle. Oh, hybrid system just went on. Uh, I'm gonna close the door. So this is your digital IP, which I'm not sure if it's entirely standard, but definitely available. 14 inch touchscreen display, which is lovely. I very much like how the, uh, the, the knobs are very integrated into it, their background. It's very lovely. I mean, as far as storage is concerned, ooh, neat. Well, that's a nice touch. I'm discovering along with you guys, that's pretty cool. Uh, so there's your wireless charger for the phone and the storage underneath. These might be push. What is that? Ah, oh, they're removable. Very nice. Lovely touch. Ah, uh, yes, that's always very cool. So you don't bother your neighbor. Looks deep enough. The storage bins are pretty cool. Oh, there's even suede on the dashboard. That's really nice. See, this is the type of stuff that's going to sell this vehicle on top of the performance and the efficiency and the fit finish and the styling. Now, visibility looks to be really, really good all the way down to here. I mean, the base of the apler for the size of the vehicle is very thin and there's a nice open spot there. I feel like I should be giving you so much more, but this is about all I can give you because I can't drive it and I don't want to get in trouble. Um, look, suffice it to say that um, this is an extremely convincing effort on behalf of Toyota. It's got absolutely everything it needs to be very successful, even starting with the base turbocharged 2.4 liter engine. I mean, that'll easily rival, say, uh, Acura's standard 3.5 liter V6, which is a nice engine. And while well, speaking of Acura, even the Type S with uh, the turbocharged 3 liter V6, pretty sure the 500H and the 500H Plus plug-in hybrid are gonna wipe the floor with it. And I don't even need to mention the QX60. I'm thinking this is gonna conquer a lot of families in North America and uh, with reason, with reason. I'm sure it's gonna be ultra smooth, very quiet, very comfortable. And uh, I feel like I should be giving you even more, but that's it, that's all I've got. So uh, thank you for watching.